In this video, we'll be seeing how to use Viewbinder in Android. First of all, you can go to Gradle Scripts, build.gradle and scroll down. And inside the Android tag, you can see this. So come inside here on the bottom, we can type build features. And inside that you can enable view binding. Set it to true. Now that's all. Now you can click on sync now and you can close the Gradle file. So now we can use the view binder instead of find view by ID. Now we can go to the layout part inside the activity main XML part. Go to the split mode and here we can remove the text view and add a button view. We have to add an ID for the button. You can also give a text for the button. So now we are having a button and we can align it to sender. So drag and drop it to sender and maybe add a constraint to the top and also to the bottom, to the left and to the right as well. Okay. So now we are having the button aligned on the sender. So that's all with the layout part. So we have added a button and we need this ID for the button as well. That's all. Now go to the activity main Java part and we'll be seeing how to initialize this button without using the find view by ID. So here we have to create a class. So you can get the class name like activity main binding. Create an object binding. So here you can see this class name. So this class name resembles the file name inside the layout. So you can see the file name is activity underscore main dot XML. And we are having the class name like activity main binding. So if you change the file name here, let me change the file name and show you. So here you can see that I'm going to change the file name to main activity. Okay. Now let's click on refractor and you can see the class name has gone to red. So that means that we have changed the file name and this class is no more valid. So now the class name will be main activity binding. See, we can see that. So inside the import, we have to remove this line from here. So hope you understand how that class name comes from. Okay. Now we have to initialize the object. So binding equal to main activity binding dot inflate inside that call the get layout inflator give a semicolon and then we can create an object for the view. So view, create an object view. So we have to import the class, click here and type all tender and the class will be imported. So we are creating an object for the class view and that is equal to binding dot get root. So this will get the view from the binding and then we can remove this line from here because we are using the view binding. So we don't need this line. So remove this line. Okay. And here we can call that set content view. Then we can pass the view here. See, so hope you understand what happened here. We are having this class name and this class name depends upon the file name inside the layout and we are setting it to the view creating an object for the view and then we are setting the view using the same function that we previously used. So before we used to get the view using the ID, but right now we are using the view binding. That's all. So now we'll be seeing how to use the same inside a fragment as well. For that, we have to create a new fragment. So come here, new and go to the fragment and create a blank fragment. So we can name the fragment as you like. So I'm going to keep it to the same and click finish. So the fragment is ready. Now we can remove the unwanted command and all. So we can remove this from here till here. Okay. So we simply need this own create view function. You can remove everything else. Okay. And come here and remove this return statement also because we are using the view binding. So for that, come here and create an object for the class. So the class name will be like fragment blank binding because we are having the layout name like fragment underscore blank. So we'll be having the class name like fragment blank binding. Okay. Hope you understand how it comes.
so we have declared the object now we have to initialize the object so binding equal to fragment blank binding dot inflate and inside this we have to pass the object this inflator object so pass the inflator here give a comma and we have to pass the container that is the view group object we are getting inside the on view created so pass that give a comma and also pass a false give a semicolon okay now we have to get the view so just like we did on the previous activity we have to create an object for the view class and then we have to call the get root so binding dot get root and now we can return the view so that's all so this is how we can do the binding in the fragment now if you want to set an on click listener for the button or something like that so if you want to use the view from the layout let's go to the fragment and add a button for the fragment as well okay we are having a text view let's set an on click listener for the text view so we can give an id for the text view okay so we are simply giving an id for the text view so you can change the view the view doesn't matter so we are simply going to give the id for an view and we can go to the fragment so you have to remember that this is the fragment so go to the blank fragment dot java and here we can call the id like binding dot the id that we just given so the id was text click okay so we are getting the id when we call binding dot instead of find view by id we can simply call binding dot id okay and we can set an on click listener dot set on click listener so now it is everything back to normal just like how we used to do with the object so we can do new on click listener see so that's all so this is how we can use the view binding in fragment now i will show how to do the same inside the main activity as well so for that we can copy this code from here and we can paste it here so we have to paste everything after the set content view okay and we are having this error here because we are not having this id so our button id was let's go to the main activity and you can see the button id was btn click so we have to change the id here and the on click listener is set for the button as well that's all very simple so if you were not using the view binding we'll be doing something like this i will show you see you can see in this line if you are not using the view binding we have to create an object for the button then call the find view by id inside that we will be passing the id and then we can use the object of the button here so we can change this to button see now we are calling the on click listener for this object of the button that's all so instead of that we can simply call binding dot followed by the id of the button that's all so we can remove this line from here that's all hope you understand the view binding in an android if you have any doubt you can leave a comment below and i'll respond to them if you like this video give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel for more such videos